Welcome to this video. Now maybe you know about RX chairs and observables and maybe you already created your own observables and worked with them a bit. You might have noticed that observables are kind of passive. You wrap an event, you wrap an HTTP request, you can't trigger the emission of a new value manually. Now having that passive approach might not be what you need in some cases. Maybe you want to be able to emit a new value manually. So you want to use that observable like an event emitter where you in your code control when a new value is emitted. We can do this with something which is called a subject. It inherits from the observable, but there we can also call the next method manually to force it to emit a new value. And therefore we can have a more active approach of using observables with subjects. Now that doesn't mean that you should always use subjects, just use them if you need to use something like an event emitter. Let's see this in action in JSFiddle. I'm in JSFiddle here and all I did is add an import to the CDN link of our XJS, which you can find on the official page at the very bottom. Make sure to pick the right version there. And here I now want to create a subject. So I can create a new subject stored in a variable named subject. The name is up to you though. And I use rx subject. However, unlike the observable, I now don't call a helper method like create. Instead, I simply instantiate this object with the new keyword. It basically is just a constructor. Now that's my subject, which I can use like an event emitter. Now I can set up my observers, but I can save some time by using the subject like this calling the subscribe method and to this method I can now either simply pass an object which has the next error and complete method an observer may have or just a list of these methods. So here I will pass a JavaScript object, we'll call the next method like this and I know here I will get a value and this value, well for now I just want to log it to the console. And I will also call or add an error function, error function, excuse me, where I will log any error to the console, like this, console log error. And finally, what about complete? Let's add this too, complete this function. Console log, oops, completed. Now to demonstrate how this works, I'll add more than one subscription because the great thing about event emitters is that we could trigger it from one place in code and then react to that event in multiple places. So we typically have more than one subscriber. So here I will also subscribe. I don't use complete and error here to keep it a bit shorter though. I just have next in this subscription. Now with that, I can add some code below that where I call subject next. Keep in mind, subject is the subject I created. And now I can actively call next and emit a new data piece, something like that. If I hit control enter, you see a new data piece twice, which makes sense because I have two subscriptions, which both incorporate the next function. If I also call subject error, error here, you see, or maybe let's clear this, you see a new data piece twice and then error and then the uncaught error because the second subscription here doesn't handle the error case. So that is how I can call error and of course I could also call complete and don't pass any data here. So let's clear this, hit control, hit control enter and we see complete. And there we only handle this in the first observable so it only gets printed once. Now that is how we can use a subject and of course we could call this code in any other place. We could call it once the user clicked a button, we could call it after a timeout finished. Whatever fits your needs, you decide when you emit a new value or error or completion with a subject. As a side note, if you did complete it, emitting a new value thereafter, new value, that won't work. If I now hit control enter, you don't see new value because it was completed. So it works like an observable, but you can decide when something happens.